the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ ascended into heaven in order to show that He, together with the Father, sends the Holy Ghost. I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go. For if I go not, the paraclete will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Indeed, the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of the Father and also the Spirit of Christ, as St. Paul says several times. This is very important because the sending of the Holy Ghost is one of the many proofs of the divinity of Christ. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ is the Holy of Holies and His Spirit is the Spirit of Holiness, the Holy Ghost. He gives us His Spirit so that we may become holy. Hence, the Holy Ghost is the one who sanctifies the life giver, giving us the spiritual life of holiness. That new life is essentially a participation in the life of God, a life of knowing and loving God, starting on earth by faith, burning with charity, and having its full completion in the beatific vision in heaven. That new life starts at baptism, by which we are born of the Spirit, as our Lord Jesus Christ was made flesh by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, we need that new life in order to go to heaven. Amen, amen, I say to you, thee, unless a man be born again of water and the Holy Ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Because without the grace of God, we are dead in our offenses and in our sins. My dear brethren, by baptism, you were born of the Holy Ghost. What have you done with that new life which you then received? Have we kept it? Or have we left it been choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life? Have we really been dead to sin but alive unto God in Christ Jesus our Lord? St. Paul gives to the Galatians a test for that by enumerating the fruits of the flesh and the fruits of the Holy Ghost. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are contrary one to another, so that you do not the things that you would. And he shows here the inner battle that is found in all of us at least if we fight for God, because of the wounds of sin and these tendencies to rebel. And he continues, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. That is, if by the grace of the Holy Ghost we do the things, the right things that he is going to enumerate below, we are not crushed by the law, we are not under the law. But uh, the law of God is rather a friend that guides us on the path to heaven. As the book of Proverbs says, Lex lux, the law is a light. St. Paul says, indeed, we are not under the law, and many times he says that. And the Protestants often interpret this as if the moral law, of, that is the Decalogue, does not apply to the New Testament, as if we were no longer obliged to obey the moral law. St. Augustine has a much better explanation. He points out that in the first epistle to the Corinthians, St. Paul contrasts being under the law and being with the law saying that he is not under the law, but he is with the law of Christ. And he explains that by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we follow the law, which thus no longer condemns us, but rather approves us. Thus, uh, the law is no longer crushing us as under a heavy weight, but rather the law has become a friend that walks with us and guides us on the way to heaven. Lex Lux, the law is a light. Then St. Paul continues to the Galatians, enumerating the evil deeds. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are fornication, uncleanness, immodesty, luxury, idolatry, witchcraft, enmities, contentions, emulations, wrath, quarrels, dissensions, sects, envies, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. Of the which I foretell you, as I have foretold you, that they who do such things shall not obtain the kingdom of God. Now that is very clear and need no explanation. He continues, But the fruit of the Spirit is charity, joy, peace, patience, benignity, goodness, longanimity, mildness, faith, modesty, continency, chastity. Against such there is no law. That is what he said before. Those who are led by the Spirit, that is, those who are docile to the Holy Ghost, are not under the law. That is, the true Christian life, charity, joy, peace, patience, benignity, goodness, Longanimity, mildness, faith, modesty, continency, chastity. These are called by St. Thomas Aquinas the fruits of the Holy Ghost. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the vices and with the vices and concupiscences. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. In order to bear the, these fruits of the Holy Ghost, it is necessary to oppose and fight against the flesh and its evil desires. The Holy Ghost helps us much to live such spiritual life, first of all by prayer. In order to do good, we need to pray. We need the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And grace is given in abundance to those who pray. 
Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. The Holy Ghost is called the Spirit of Grace and Prayer by the prophet Zachary. I will pour out upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of prayers. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for an only son, and they shall grieve over him as the mother is to grieve for the death of the firstborn. He is the spirit that leadeth to prayer, especially contemplating the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, him whom they have pierced, the only begotten son, the firstborn among the many brethren. A true spiritual life is a life of constant prayer. We ought to pray always and not to lose heart. That fervent prayer makes us burn with the fire of divine charity. My heart grew hot within me. In, in my meditation a fire shall flame out. That is the fire of the Holy Ghost, fire which our Lord wants to enkindle in the whole earth. I am come to cast fire on the earth, and what will I but that it be enkindled? The fire of the love of God. God has given us his gifts, faith, charity, etc., not only for our own salvation, but so that through us many others may also receive the same gifts. I am come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. St. John says beautifully in his epistle, that which was found from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen and do bear witness and declare unto you the life eternal which was with the Father and has appeared to us. That which we have seen and have heard, we declare unto you that you also may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship may be with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things we write to you that you may rejoice and that your joy may be full. So St. John did not only receive that life, but he was careful to give it to others too. The more we appreciate the gift of God, the more we realize that we should give them to others. And the more we give them, the more we have them. The more we spread the true faith, burning with charity, the more our own faith is strengthened and charity and kindled. In this time before Pentecost, with the apostles and around Our Lady in the synagogue, let us pray to receive an abundance of the gift of the Holy Ghost, so that we may truly li live that spiritual life and communicate it around us for our salvation and the salvation of many. Amen.